I just got up. I <laughs> love what Katie's up to. Good morning. This is how a lot of our mornings have been starting lately. That you get up for me. Well, that I get my laptop out while I'm still sitting in bed because it's too cold to venture out. It's colder than we expected on this trip. Everybody who's watching right now, comment, thank you, Katie, for editing this. Because she is an absolute superstar for dealing with all our footage and doing all the editing. I'm really struggling with some technical stuff lately, but I'm hoping that once I figure it out, it'll really satisfy. We've been filming on our phones and that's brought some new challenges. At any given time, there's like six different towels hanging up in this van. At least we got the shower. Yeah. It's been days. I know. <laughs> All right, here's the breakfast scene. I ate my cereal. <laughs> Pretty quick. Pretty minimal. I just have cereal, but Katie's up a I don't know I've always like I always was a cereal person but I just find like I get hungry so quickly if I just have cereal for breakfast like I'm not a big breakfast filling. kind of person like I can't eat that much as soon as I wake up but I then need, like a full square meal as soon as I get out of bed in the morning and then I feel ready for the day and then this is our setup we're gonna just work here for a while wow look at that sunbeam coming in you can see how dusty the cab is <laughs> I guess we'll do some cleaning tonight. Fun, I gotta flip this pancake. Uh oh. It's okay, I like it like that. Just in case you were worried, it's okay. I did bring maple syrup from home. It's 3 p.m. here, which means it's 5 p.m. at home. I'm done work and ready for a walk. And look who's still working. It's Katie, still working. I'm almost done. Hi, we are in New Mexico and it's cold here. We have a lot to catch you up on. We have had a really busy week. On Monday, we were at House Pueblo, which you saw in our last video. On Tuesday, we were at Bandelier National Monument. This is a really cool historic park where you can see cliff dwellings. You can actually even climb up ladders into the caves in the side of a cliff, which were carved out by the people who lived in the village of Chuaini and you can see the ruins of this village that's shaped in a circle. You can see the kivas, their spiritual kind of meeting places. It was very, very cool. And then the next day on Wednesday, we were at Chaco Culture National Historic Park. And that was incredible. We don't always show the spots where we're working during the days, but this is a particularly cool one because there's this oil derrick right here. It's a derelict derrick, uh, it's kind of abandoned, been shut off, but I've never been this close to one and it's an impressive piece of machinery. But today we're gonna to be continuing our tour of indigenous cultural sites throughout America and going to Chaco Culture National Historic Park. I think this will be a cool one. The Chaco Culture National Historic Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site located in a remote canyon in northern New Mexico, containing the most sweeping collection of ancient ruins north of Mexico. The park preserves one of the most important pre-Columbian cultural and historical areas in the United States. Between 900 and 1150 AD, Chaco Canyon was a major center of culture for the ancestral Puebloans. 
assembling 15 major complexes that remained the largest buildings ever built in the United States until the 19th century. Like there's, there are some people, but very few. And there's maybe like a dozen of us total. Yeah, in the whole park. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a really impressive site. I think it's definitely worth visiting. And if you do come, it's worth buying the uh, $2 trail guide. This is how we know everything that we do. Yeah. <laughs> said we'd have to stoop, they weren't kidding. Can you make it? Yeah. This one's even shorter. That's plaster, because this wall would have been covered with a plaster veneer. Then right above your head is where the roof for the for first story would be. Then up there, that's the roof of the second story. And then there would have been a third story above that. And look at all that timber, like all, even those sticks, like those big sticks they'd have to bring in from the mountains. This room has been replastered by archeologists to give you a sense of what the rooms would have looked like originally. I think it's so cool how there was um, astronomical significance to the layout of the building. We've heard about that at other places too. Um, the whole Pueblo is situated along cardinal directions. This wall behind me runs east-west. There's a wall that divides the plaza that runs north-south. And then there's this corner doorway that lines up so that on the solstice, the winter solstice, the, the sun shines directly through that doorway into the room behind. How cool is that? Pueblo del Arroyo, which is just like a neighboring great house to Pueblo Bonito, which is just over there. Just a short walk that way, yeah. It's cool, it's like a whole city, like with different, it's almost like a apartment buildings, so just a block away from each other. One mind-blowing fact that's in the uh, booklet, the booklets we've been reading, is that they basically ran out of the good quality stone for building these types of buildings. There was this nice, uh, hard, brown sandstone or reddish darker sandstone that they used at first and they basically exhausted the supply of it in this area so they switched to this sandstone which is larger loaf shaped pieces and it's a lighter color and softer rock. softer so not as good for building with it's really useful for archaeology because they can tell what was built later when that that lighter loaf shaped um, sandstone was used I think we can squeeze in one more site before we run out of daylight. Yeah. Let's go. So we're in the suburbs now, and that was downtown over there. That's fun. That is so cool. It's just amazing because we're like in this flat canyon that you can see so far. And you can see like the different little towns, houses spread out. It's a whole city. Yeah. 
nearly every Chacoan community, built between 900 and 1200. Great kivas are often located in the plazas of great houses. Casa Rinconada and others were placed centrally within villages and communities. Some are located along roads and placed on the top of bridges and hills. The park ranger told me that this is the largest kiva that they know of. The brochure says it's the largest excavated Chacoan kiva, but either way, and a hugely impressive structure. We've seen quite a few kivas now along our journey, and this is truly something else. Just the thickness of the walls alone is insane. Again, this structure was built following the cardinal directions. The doorways run north-south, and they're within one degree of true north-south alignment. All right, the sun is behind the canyon now. We're the last ones in the parking lot. The park ranger said that the park closes at 5 p.m. Everyone needs to be gone. So it's time for us to hit the road. campground just outside of Gallup, New Mexico. We got here last night and tonight we're kind of taking the night off and we're just chilling here. We're actually staying somewhere for two nights in a row, which is a change of pace for us because today is American Thanksgiving and so nothing's really open like the national parks aren't open. So we're here, here which we this is just as beautiful, honestly. Like I can't believe how cool of a hike this is for just a random municipal campground. It's really cool. We returned from our walk. We've had dinner. I'm setting up a board game. Katie's finishing, finishing the dishes. The van's a little bit of a mess, but not as bad as it was. Katie gets most of the credit for that. Just for the record, I was the one that made dinner. It was really tasty. It was like loaded nachos. And now we're just gonna chill for the rest of the evening. Oh, why is this open? That's better. When wandering, this game is called Wingspan. We're playing the two-player Asia edition. It's a lot of fun. One of my favorite games. And who do you think's gonna hard win? to say who's <laughs> winning, honestly. It could be close. We made it to Petrified Forest National Park. Today we are visiting our final national park of this leg of the journey anyway. We're in Petrified Forest National Park. What are those people just like swiped right us right now? <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Double. Anyway, we're in Petrified Forest National Park and I think we're going to have a great day exploring, seeing the views. We're at our first scenic pull-off right now. The views are stunning. They call this area the Painted Desert because of the layers of rock being such vibrant colors. This is what's left of Route 66. At least uh, right here. This, in our last video, we were driving along Route 66 through a town. Yes, in some areas, Route 66 has, has been incorporated into towns or has just been maintained as a country road. Of course, now it's Interstate 40 that bypasses, you know, it runs the same route that yeah. Route 66 used to. I don't know if anybody else thinks of this, but all this Route 66 stuff just makes me think of the movie Cars. That is just my entire context and all of my knowledge around Route 66 comes from Radiator Springs. Yeah, we have to find Radiator Springs. There is like a real town that the movie's based on. Yeah, and it's really giving this vibe. Look, I gotta think Radiator Springs is around here somewhere because it's kind of what it looks like there. We'll keep our eyes out. Not only is there a fabulous view here, but I think I'm seeking my 
first pieces of petrified wood. We're at a place called Blue Mesa. It's called that because of this layer of bluish soil um, that you can see in the canyon walls. Driving around here has been spectacular. There's some beautiful views as well. On this hike, we're starting to see more and more petrified wood, which is what we came here for. It's crazy. These are literally ancient trees that have turned to actual stone. The colors in this are crazy. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> quite the little hike. I'm kind of pooped. How about you? There's a big uphill at the end, so I'm exactly. warm now. I took my coat off. This Blue Mesa area has been cool. Yeah, but, very uh, cool. Let's move on. We've got more petrified wood to see. <laughs> so dark. I think we have probably arrived at one of the coolest stops for seeing petrified wood. folks we are making the most of the last drops of sunlight this is our final trail for the day we are seeing a long log and agate house the first one i think you know exactly what that is the second thing agate house i honestly think that's going to be the coolest thing we'll see all day and you'll see what you'll see what i'm talking about this structure is pretty incredible because this is a Pueblo built out of petrified wood. These fossilized trees are so abundant around here that it was just the most straightforward building material for the people to use who built this home. This has been another full week of adventures. And I hope you enjoyed coming along for us as the sun sets on our time here at Petrified Forest. We're gonna close out this week's vlog and uh, next week I think is gonna be our last van vlog for a while. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. <laughs>